literally like only 1% of vegans are activists. And if we had even just 10% or 50%, we would have had a vegan world last week. When people sit hear the word vegan activist, they just put that, that, that view of what a vegan activist in their head and that's in a box. And that box doesn't expand out. And a lot of people don't know the different forms of activism. There are so many different forms of activism. And people just don't, just don't know them. Hey beautiful beans, in this week's video I'm interviewing Mippy Valentine, or otherwise known as Moo and Mippy. She's an activist that I discovered in May 2018 while watching a live video on Facebook of James Aspie at a pig farm in Australia. I think it was the first Meet the Victims, or one of the first Meet the Victims activ um, activism events. And I was watching this woman talk and listening to her words She's been interviewed by the press and then went on to do a little interview with James afterwards. And it was really hard to ignore what she was saying. And if it wasn't for her, I don't think I would have got active. I think I probably would have done eventually, but I think it would have taken me a lot longer. So I'm hoping that her interview today will inspire some of you out there to go out, do some activism, no matter how small or how big, it doesn't matter as long as you're doing something and sowing some seeds. So I want to welcome you, Mippy. Thank you for coming. Hello, hello. <laughs> How are you today? Uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, trying to plan my next cunning actions, being stuck in lockdown. Well, I can't really do that much, drive insane, but hey ho. Yeah, I think the whole world feels exactly what you're feeling right now. <laughs> I know I do. So the first question I want to ask you is how and when did you become vegan? Um, so I went vegan the hard way and that was, uh, I came over to Australia on a working holiday visa and, um, and I was vegetarian. I actually went vegetarian from, um, going to an agricultural college and I was vegetarian for like nine years and I came over to Australia and to get your second, second year working holiday visa, you have to do farm work or fruit picking. And I was like looking online at jobs and I was like, Ooh, a small family run dairy farm you know, small family run, ticked every single one of my vegetarian boxes. And I was like, yeah, this is the one. Um, applied for it, uh, met the guy. The guy was so lovely. Uh, I decided to live on my own in the middle of nowhere with him. Literally like, um, and then to cut a long story short, um, within six weeks, I was fired for trying to stop animal abuse. And the guy that I decided to live on my own with uh, was basically got to the point where he was kicking uh, basically, he was kicking the shit out of the cows, looking at me and getting off on it. And I reported him to the RSPCA. I, I'm, I'm the most stubbornest person you'll ever meet in your life. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't going to leave those cows with that man. So I stayed living on the farm with him um, in a house on my own. Um, they, I reported him to the RSPCA. The RSPCA actually tipped off the farm while I was working there. I was invited into the kitchen. We had a conversation. They didn't want to use the words. Uh, animal cruelty or RSPCA, but it was really roundabout kind of way. And I just played that, you know, dippy girl who didn't know what she was like, oh, hey, yeah, well, I don't know her. And they fell for it, silly fools. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, yeah, and then after about, then the, the abuse to the cows got worse and worse. And when the RSPCA clearly didn't turn up and they just tipped off the farm, um, there was nothing I could do. And, yeah, it's cut a long story short. I've seen a lot of really bad stuff that gave me nightmares for a year, including cows having their tails broke, punched in the face, uh, pregnant mothers being beaten up on the floor when they lay down. Um, there was a baby cow that was sick and I wanted to help it or put it in the shade and I wasn't allowed to touch this baby cow. And because I kept going on about this baby cow to the owner, it then made him um, get sick of hearing me whinging about the baby cow to the, him then drowning the baby cow in front of me. And so I seen all this really awful, awful stuff, um, which, um, yeah, it put me, put me in a, um, a really, really, it actually put me in a really angry phase for about two years because, um, I would tell my friends, my family, I tell, I tell them my stories, they cry with me. And then I see them drinking milkshake the following day. And I'm just like, how can you do this? And I end up going to, um, Animal Liberation Victoria and ask them for help. And they contacted the RSPCA. So this was the third time I contacted the RSPCA. Um, or second, was it? Let me think. 
yeah, third. Third time I contacted them and they said they had never contacted them and every record of me contacting them about the abuse that I'd seen on the farm was gone there was no record of it and nothing i got emails of it like and it's all there and mm. they just basically just shoot on the cover not once did they ever come to me and ask me for a witness statement those cow those cows can't talk for themselves i've seen cows get their tails broken punched in the face drowned bones broken i've seen some horrible horrible stuff and the rspca could not even care less they just tipped off the farm and for me it was like i was a vegetarian who was it was big believer in free range eggs and, and you know, farmers love their animals and all the rest of it. And, you know, I mean, I only went, um, I only went vegetarian because I didn't, I didn't agree with uh, castration of sheep and tail docking and, and seeing babies go to slaughter. That was the reasons I went vegetarian from being an animal agricultural college. And then, I don't know, it's like a sledgehammer to the face, really. It's reality. Dish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it does it does definitely it does definitely slap you in the face that that must be a very traumatic experience because i was the same you know cows need to be milked and you know hens laid i mean i never ate eggs anyway so that wasn't really a problem with me going vegan but the whole dairy industry i i just you know cows need to be milked and it, we've drunk milk for years and you know it's just normal all the same things that you hear from other people yeah I never thought cows needed to be milked. I just, I didn't think about their babies and I didn't think, I didn't think they just naturally give milk or anything. I just didn't think about it. Mm. It wasn't in my thought pattern. Like, why would it be my thought pattern? Like, I, who, who in a million years would think that, um, well, yeah, a mother has to give birth to have produce milk. But then that baby then get killed. None of these thought patterns get put into place. You don't ever think about those things. You just, you just see laughing cow adverts and Ooh, yeah. there's a baby bell and everyone, there's a cow skipping along and they're all laughing and everyone's happy. And that's just what I thought was it. They totally yeah. brainwashed. Yeah, we are definitely brainwashed. That's a word I would use. So um, you're based in Australia now. So, yeah. um, and do you do activism just where you are at the moment or do you do it in surrounding areas? What, what sort of areas do you do in Australia? all over so um because of my um i've seen the things i've seen i'm literally driven mentally insane by um um i'm driven insane by animal cruelty and i know things ain't going to change unless people are being active so i remember even trying to set up uh, animal rights groups to start off with in perth and it was just me and a couple of others i used to go out to farms take photographs of the cruelty get a photo album and then hit the streets and, and walk around with a photo album showing people in the streets. This is me 10 years ago. How things have changed now they've got videos, but like 10 years ago, that was me getting photographs and stopping people in the street and talking to them. And I remember I used to, I used to be at it for like eight hours at a time. Wow. And none of my friends like doing uh, outreach. And I remember I used to come home and I'd turn the lights off and I'd put heavy metal on and my head would be throbbing and I'm like, nobody knows about how their food is farmed let alone how they're killed and i was just like i if i have to talk to every single person in this country i will and i was just going out all the time and it was just like you know if it wasn't going out to the farms i was go i was in hitting the streets to show people what i just witnessed and all the rest of it and i was uh, yeah i think i actually really drove myself a bit mentally insane doing, <laughs> doing that for a long time but uh because i do full-time activism I can't afford to pay rent. I can't afford to pay lots of things. So I moved into a camper van and um, lived in a car uh, my little camper van and drove me. And now I just drive myself around the country doing activism where, where, when and wherever I'm needed or setting up groups and doing lots of things. That's good. It's, it's so important to be active. I don't, you know, there's not enough of us out there. And that's yeah. why I wanted to show your activism because you have such a wide scale of, of what you do. Um, so you, it sounds like you became involved with activism straight away. As soon as you went vegan, you were, became active. Is that right? Yeah, well, it's like I said, it's that stubborn streak in me. I knew the RSPCA weren't going to help him. So what, what the, the, I made a promise. I made, I made a promise that stands, stands as, as true and as hard as it did the day I made it to the 110 cows that I was going to do my very, very best to help every single one of them. 
Yeah. And the realization that the RSPCA wasn't going to help them and to know that they're now dead and they've probably been eaten and some of them would have been sent to slaughter pregnant kills me. And I, I my, my promise still stands to them as, the, as much as it did the day I made it. And this world can only be, be, be a better place if people just stop hurting other living beings for their own self gain. So I get so emotional because it just, it just, ugh. No, it, it's, it's right to be emotional because it's so frustrating and you feel like you're talking to a brick wall sometimes just people's <laughs> ignorance know, right? yeah people's ignorance and not wanting to listen and like I have the same problem with my family and friends not all of them but you know my husband's vegan and I'm really lucky that he is he just went yeah. straight away as soon as I said I was I was doing it he was like okay I'll do it with you there was no questions or argument or anything yeah. um but my That's family's really cool much harder friends are much harder they talk about it some of them um but yeah. some of them don't want to hear about it and i'm banned from talking about it with some of them um yeah. but that's the good thing about the pledge it's you know funny how like you're probably banned from talking about it but they'd be quite happy to eat those products in front of you it's so like so double standards like i like sometimes like when i'm when i'm with my family i go to open my mouth and it's like i don't want to know and i'm like I actually haven't even said anything. I don't even talk about being, but it's their subconscious is like already give, already having to go with them in the back of their head. I don't even have to say anything because they're just like, I don't want to hear it. I'm like, I was actually just going to talk about, I don't know, let's say the weather. Do you want a cup of tea? Whatever it might be, but they're already, they're already up in arms. They're, they, they, they're, they're having to go with themselves in their head. I don't have to do anything. Yeah. It's not my fault. I mean, if you don't like how your brain's thinking about yourself, then maybe change yourself. Don't have a go with someone who you, you can only admire to be. <laughs> what's, the the what's the reaction you get from the public when you go out and do activism then? Is it uh, overall pretty good? Um, I think um, oh, it depends on the form of activism I'm doing. If I'm doing outreach, really, really good because I've, I've been doing outreach now for, um, well, 10, 11 years. Um, and I've got it. I've got it down packed. I can talk to someone, and even when they try to say stuff that's gonna like what they'd say to a vegan to try and stir them up and get something, I can. I, I'll just flip the joke on them, on and have it have a laugh with them, and 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 also I used to do. Um, I used to work for a charity called the Wellness Society, and I used to train people how to talk to people in the street. Um, on how to build rapport how, when you do mirroring and when someone's feeling like closed off and they're starting to close off to what you're saying mm -hmm. what body language you use on a psychology basis that opens that person up a bit more um, so um, I've put all that all the training I got in because I used to talk to people about environmental issues and then get their credit card details off them to then get them on a monthly payment to help save the environment so all those skills that I use for that, I just put into veganism. And then, yeah, now I'm just like, mm -hmm. yep, come on. Yeah. Open your heart, open your minds, close your mouths and open your heart. <laughs> yeah, same. I'm, I find it so much easier talking to people on the streets than I do with family and friends. I think you don't have that personal investment in the relationship, so it, it kind of makes it easier. And when they do say that, the, the, you know, I can't live without cheese or the normal things that they get, where do you get your protein from? I tend to react a lot calmer than I do with, with family and friends. It's, I find it much yeah. easier. And yeah, I've got this yeah. autopilot thing now where I know what I'm going to say and yeah. Yeah, no, I, I feel on that one. So I was recently, um, so I've been trying to broaden my horizon with my dating because there are not too many, like the alternative vegans in Australia are like second to none there are like zero i'm an alternative person i like i like alternative i'm sexually attracted to people who are alternative and there's there's, there's none unless i just like the like if i was to go out with any of the vegans that i find in australia they are we're the only thing we're gonna have in common is veganism <laughs> do you know what i mean and yeah. that's like it's, i've been vegan sexual for a long time but i went on a date recently with a, a non-vegan and he was like saying oh yeah, I'd love to learn more about it, and then would have a go at me. So, like, I've not had the vegan conversation with him in any way, shape, or form. He wanted to buy a, a, da a, cho a dairy chocolate, and I was like, no, nah, you don't want to buy that. You don't want that shit in your body. And they said, baby cows sledgehammered, sledgehammered to death as standard practice in this country. You don't want to put that into your body. And he was just like, ah. and then 
I don't know, fast forward three hours, he's like, stop me, you're preaching at me. And I'm like, that was the only thing I said. If he wanted me to preach, I could have preached at him well hard, but I didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was just like, when someone says that to me, I'm just like, preaching, you're not, ah. <laughs> so I, let, let's just say we're not going on another date again. Wow. I can't. There'll be someone else. I'm sure you'll, oh, yeah. you'll, you'll get someone else and you'll be able to turn them vegan, definitely. Um, <laughs> so, um, my question earlier was, you know, when you first became involved in activism, which it sounds like, like you said earlier, you straight away. Um, what forms of activism have you done over the years? I mean, there, I know there's so many, but you mentioned yeah. something earlier before we started recording, which I think was a really good idea of, of activism for people oh. that are busy. Yeah, so there's uh, many different forms of activism. Um, it wasn't the first form of activism did, but like there's when, because people, people have this idea in their head when they hear the word vegan activist, they just put that image of whatever they've got in their head. And then they just think that's what it is. And there's not, there's, there's so many different forms of activism, like so many different forms and all are very much needed. Like it doesn't take one, like it doesn't take like one form of activism to create animal liberation. We need, every, as, as humans, we don't all fit into one box. So we need to tick every single box. And it says the average person needs 10 seeds planting before changing. And one, one, of the, one of the simplest things that somebody can do with like scrap paper, like, you know, if you've got kids or something and they've been drawing and they've been scribbling on that piece of paper, get that A4 piece of paper, just cut it up so you've got like six pieces and then just write on it. It could be like a little note and, um, I'd, I'd be like, hello, did you know? And then I'd write a, like a, a, I don't know, a fact about the dairy industry or the egg industry or something about a slaughterhouse and, or, you know, have you been lied to? Watch dominion.com or um, something like that. And then cut it out. And then when you're on a walk in, just uh, uh, walk up someone's car with their um, window wipers and then just put it in the window wiper. And then someone's going to come along and go, oh my God, there's a note on my car. My car been been hit or something. And then they'll be like, oh, thank God it's not. And then they're relieved to have this vegan message and actually their car's not been hurt. <laughs> yeah, no, I've never even thought about that before. And it's a really good idea. I'm going to start doing that on my walks to work when, if I ever go back to work. Um, <laughs> but so I, I take, you know, stickers with me on my walk to work and put them and there's this one particular um, traffic light and I put them up and every time I walk pa back past it, they've whipped it off. And I know that it's some non-vegan who's got really angry with my sticker but i just laugh at it because i've got like a ton more in my bag so just get another one out and put it back up again so they're not yeah. going to stop me i've always got hundreds of stock of stickers everywhere but yeah that's a really easy form of activism you're not having to talk to anyone you're just writing notes and getting the message out there um, yeah. what activism works best for you um i really enjoy vegan outreach because um just to stop there and and talk and have that one-to-one -one conversation with someone who's engaging and i'm a very people person so i can talk to anybody and everybody and i'm, I'm very like i'm like a, a chameleon so i can mold myself to whomever and then have a really good chin wag and i like i like the fact of uh, understanding where people come from and having that conversation and I'm, and I'm a good debater and I'm a good debater and I can do it like you know I'm a good debater with a smile on my face and I, and I like to know that person feels um all the boxes tick like do they, do they feel safe and they, I want them to feel open that they can ask any question and I also know that you know I could also hold myself so if someone was to be like then I'm like back at them but in a <laughs> nice way <laughs> I can hold my own yeah. um um, yeah, I don't know. I really, really enjoy our outreach, but I also up there with the outreach. I also really like, um, I would say I also really like it when I'm on a megaphone. Um, it's a shame I can't get, I, I struggle to get people to film and if I had people to film, I'd probably have a lot more footage. Um, but, um, I like being on a megaphone and I do things very different and I am, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at public speaking and um i like i like being i like being on a megaphone in the middle of the city centers and talking to people on the action that i've i've organized and put everything together and one of my favorite things is when i create uh well i don't want to say i because that's wrong because it doesn't take just me it takes a whole bunch of people who support me which are amazing and um, i really like it when 
we we managed to have like a sea of people all surrounding us with whether it be meat trays or when I've had people with blood coming from their mouths standing, standing over a barbecue with a baby lamb on it and stuff and all weird and wonderful things I've done and just to have like a sea of people all standing around and they're filming they're the ones doing the uh, taking photos and doing whatever they choose to for their social medias and when I'm talking seeing seeing people and seeing people's reaction and being like oh I mean I remember I've, I, I can't tell you how many times I've seen it where I've seen some like a number of normally women who are like like that and they're just this the shocked they're really shocked by what I'm telling them and I've, I've, I've made people cry. In fact, I've made myself cry. I've been on the bloody megaphone and I'm talking from my heart and I'm talking about the things I've experienced and I've got tears on my face and the people I'm talking to have got tears coming down their face. And I've got these cards, I've got like 10,000 cards printed off with how to make going vegan exceptionally easy on my own personal cards. And I hand them out to all everybody and just to know that all these seeds are being planted there. They're probably my favorite forms of activism. Yeah, I, I love watching those ones. Um, I think I saw one of you recently and everyone was led on the floor and they were, well, it wasn't, it wasn't recently. I think it might have been the end of last year and people were led on the floor with like blood all over them and, and stuff. Oh, yeah. And, and yeah, and I loved your confinement one where you put yourself in a cage as well. Oh, that was so hard. <laughs> Never again will I do that. <laughs> I probably would. If they said to me, every animal would be free if you spent like even a year in there, I would have been like, okay. Because that, that cage I was in, I couldn't sit up. I couldn't lie down. I was incredibly uncomfortable. And, and you know, I had, I had my friends there to give me food and give me drinks. And when I did that, just seeing smiley faces coming at me and handing me cups of tea and handing me yummy food uh, actually made me feel very, very guilty for um, the animals I had as a child and who's at, the animals I forgot about and left in hutches as a child growing up, it made me feel incredibly guilty for how I treated them. And a lot of realization, not realization, but a lot of more, um, what should I say? Um, it was a lot, I was really sad for some of the animals I've seen and some of the animals I've seen in farms knowing that, you know, I know I'm getting out of this cage and they're still there today or they've yeah. been killed and that, that made me feel really sad. That made me feel incredibly sad. And I remember being in the cage. I mean, I actually had a breakdown after I got out of that cage, like a full on breakdown. I was so, so sad because I got out and I was okay. And um, there's nothing going on in the news here. And you know, in Australia, we haven't had anything, anything at all to talk about. Zoonotic diseases are caused by animal exploitation. Nothing, nothing at all. And every day, there's nothing on the news. I've got some random woman going, I'm sick of my kids. I've got washing up to my eyeballs. I hate my life. It was just a different face saying the same stuff. And I just put myself in a cage. I invited every single news channel around my house. We set it up so we had hand sanitizer. I, I ran around like a blue ass chicken when we weren't allowed to go outside and try and get dolls from a cage and try and set up the space that I set up. Cause it, you know, my friends couldn't believe it where I set it up. It was in a dining area that's all open. I had to close it all off. A lot of work went into it. And then not to have, not even a little bit of interest from uh, a news, news that, for, that just, just really, really upset me. Cause I was just like, you can't even get the truth on the news. And you know, I may put myself in a cage and what are you doing? You're filming some woman on fucking the internet who's whinging about washing for fuck's sake. And yeah. this is like, People are complaining about how, you know, uh, how COVID-19 has destroyed their lives, destroyed their business. And I'm like, well, how do you think those vegans feel? Like, we don't even cause this. Like, the, the leading experts of the planet of like, about zoonomic diseases, like Dr. Michael Greger, has already said that COVID-19 is nothing more than a dress rehearsal for the next big pandemic. And, you know, leading experts are saying we need to stop uh, farming animals. This needs to stop. And how many slaughterhouses have been closed down because of COVID-19? And they're not even thinking about why is it spread through slaughterhouses so quick? And it's just like, they're not even talking about it, even though it is the fact that when when our bodies, you know, like all animals, including humans, um, when our, when we're stressed, when we're super, super stressed, our, immune, our immunity is crippled, literally crippled. So these zoonotic diseases pass through our bodies really quickly. And that's why when Co like, that's why COVID-19 ends up with slaughterhouses. It's got all these test tubes of all these bodies. It can just bounce through and infects everyone at the drop of a hat. Mm. 
and it, it is and it's so frustrating that they're not talking about that and yeah nothing. but i i hope and i believe that with your post on social media of you being trapped in the cage that people are going to see that and i think it's on your youtube channel as well isn't it uh, yeah, this, I've got to make a video. Uh, my friend was supposed to help me make a video, but that hasn't come alight as usual. And uh, I need to learn how to make videos because I've got I've got 24 hours worth of videos from two different live streams that I need to do one through. Um, I have had Peter contact me saying they wanted to do something on it, but I need to make a video. So yes, I need to practice my video skills. Yeah, but you don't. You have no <laughs> idea how many people have actually seen that on on Facebook. I I think I shared it as well when you when you put it on when it was a live stream I did like a watch party for it um yeah. and I what I love about doing Instagram or Facebook is that none of my non well very few of my non-vegan friends will like my vegan post but when I put a post on that's about something completely different and nothing to do with veganism I can see who's still watching and who's still looking so yeah. even though I think they're not following me I know they are because they're liking the post about me and my husband doing something or you know, doing yeah. the garden or something like that, then I know they're still there and I'm still sowing seeds. And I yeah. got a message from a friend of mine from uni who lives in New Zealand now. And he sent me this wonderful message going, I'm not vegan yet, but I want you to keep on doing what you're doing because you've made me think and you, I'm getting that connection, I'm getting there. So yeah. you know, just one message like that is enough to like keep you fighting and keep going. Yeah, and you'd strange. be surprised. Like a lot of people oh, like won't say anything, don't comment anything. And then out of nowhere, you'll just get random messages. And I can't express to you how many people I've had kind of go, wow, like you've really made me think I've stopped doing this. I even have Aboriginal friends who've gone vegan from watching my videos because they're just like, whoa, I did not know that was happening. And I'm just like, Woo yeah, cool. Um, and, you know, I just, yeah, the, the, sooner, the sooner everybody just realizes that vegan is the answer to all the world leading major, major problems it faces today, the sooner we are going to be in a better, sooner we won't be in a pickle for environmentally and health wise and all the rest of it. We really need to get the ball rolling. And yeah, more I actually on. had a, a comment recently from someone who's been vegan her whole life. She was born vegan. And she said she doesn't believe activism works. And I was like, what? I've had people come up to me after I've spoken to them in the streets and they come up a few months later and said, I've gone vegan because of our conversation. Or I've had other friends that have gone vegan because of my social media posts. And what do you say to the women's rights movement and Martin Luther King that, that activism doesn't work? You know, it does work. It, it, it does change people, definitely. Yeah. It doesn't, people don't know. Like, at the end of the day, unless you're actually interested in it, then you ain't gonna go and research it at all. Um, and you know, sometimes forcing it on the agenda is needed, I meaning they're not gonna do that with outreach, but like definitely with um, like disruptions, like DXE disruptions, where we've gone into food courts. I mean, I've been into like McDonald's and, and played through a speakerphone, I've been to the deli section of what's like the equivalent of Tesco's, but Woolworths and Coles here, through a megaphone and, and played the sounds of pigs in the gas chamber screaming and then doing a talking, so, uh, speak out to people while I've had the manager trying to talk to me and I'm just like walking away from him while I'm like publicly speaking as loud as I possibly can to everyone to let them know what's happening and you know I've done that many times while they're too busy trying to shut me up the people who are stood there listening yet again they're like ah, oh my god I did not know pigs rip off their feet in gas chambers I didn't know that you know these animals are having their testicles ripped off and just cut off with no painkillers numbing agents nothing because no one would want to see that done to their dog. Um, but yeah, it's um, ev everything's needed. And some people won't stop and have that conversation. So for those people, force it on the agenda for them. Yeah. Let them hear it and see them and let them go home and let those seeds start growing in the red because nine out of 10, nine out of 10 times, um, you have that person who's listening probably an animal lover. Yeah, I mean, I, I went vegan because of Vegucated, which was filmed by an activist. So if, I hadn't, yeah. if she hadn't filmed that, I wouldn't have gone vegan, so activism 100% works, whether it's out on the yeah, street yeah, or whether it's... So I went off on a mad rant then, didn't I? <laughs> Say again? <laughs> so I went off on a mad rant then, didn't I? No, it's uh, fine. No, but... carry on. <laughs> because that's what I love about you, Mippy, and I think that's why I was inspired to get active, because you're so passionate and you're so emotive, and it comes across in all of your videos and all of your activism that I see and follow you online. It comes across and that's what inspired me and go, do you know what? I need to do something. And I, I feel like, I mean, I went vegan at 40, so I was really late to it. And I, at least I'm here and I'm glad that I did. But I yeah. find like, um, I'm making up 
for lost time now. I'm making up for those 40 years of abuse that I caused by yeah. getting active. And I feel like I found my calling. I feel like my yeah. calling is animal rights and getting a message out there. Whether that's putting myself through the mill and going to a vigil and having to spend the whole day on the sofa because I'm just like exhausted emotionally from it. Or, you know, I'm an, I'm an organizer for a Cuba Truth in Bristol whether I'm doing that or whether I'm putting stickers up or I like the idea of putting the little slips of paper in, in car windscreens. I'm yeah, people are going to people's gonna see that run around the car before they've even read it going, oh my God, someone's crushing <laughs> me. Oh my God. Oh, what? <laughs> See, I can, I, can I ask for people that are in Australia, because I know you're in Melbourne, um, but people that are, you, you said earlier, you drive around Australia and do activism everywhere. How do you advertise your events? How can people find you if they want to get involved? Um, so like, like, like everywhere, the vegan activists are few and far between. Um, so, you know, you, I, I literally know the majority of the activists in this country, or if I don't know them, then um, they probably know my face or they'll know someone that I know. So we have Facebook pages, um, depending on the event that we're organizing, it could be either if it's more of a personal one, then there'll be a text message through Signal or something. If it's more, um, as if it's low key, of course, but if this is, if it's more um, like a, an event I'm putting on, then I just do it a Facebook event and, and advertise it. But you know, you gotta make sure people know. And my problem is I'm really bad at names and I'm friends with people from all over the world. And, and when I had a video go viral from my Facebook, um, my Facebook's got like, I don't know, thousands of people who I have no idea where they are, who they're from. And I have to just, I have to really rely on the other activists to invite people because I'm shocking. Like I've got friends from um, America, Europe, Australia, and everything. And like the whole of Australia fits into Europe. So it makes, that makes it difficult. But I, as long as I know a few people in every state, then they can, add, they can add people for me. But you know, I have done events in the way I've only had like three people turn up and I've just been like, and everyone's gone, I didn't know you had an event. And I'm like, I posted it ages ago. But you need to make sure that you're talking on there, reminding people, sending private messages. It's a lot of work, really. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. And what would you say to people that aren't active at the moment and have been inspired by watching this video and me talking to you today and want to get involved and reach out to you? What would you say to those people? Um, if you truly care about a vegan world and stopping animal cruelty, you eating a vegan meal is not going to create a vegan world. I'm sorry to say that guys, it isn't. And the only way to create change is by doing something to do nothing stops, non stops nothing. You do something. And you know, like I said before, you've got this view of what activism is, but there isn't, there are so many different forms of activism, like so many different forms. If you want to shoot me a message and say, Hey, I want to get active. I don't know where to start. Send me a message. Send me who you are what what time what what how much time you've got on your hands are you good at computers do, are you a single mom uh, do you work full time you only get weekends free have you got this that, and the other and you know what i can probably point you in the right direction of stuff that will suit you are you an introvert that doesn't that hates humans and doesn't want anything to do with them and you're good with computers that's tight well there's a lot of people who need help with like video ma making skills or whatever there's jobs for everybody yeah i really is and they, like i said to animals like we are their greatest threat but only hope and if you're not going to do nothing they'll always be in like as, as i'm saying this now there are animals lined up for their own execution screaming and begging for somebody to help them unless somebody like you starts caring a whole lot more they'll always be stuck in that line and therefore they will always be living a lifetime of misery we need to be active now not tomorrow now because right now as i'm saying this there are animals hanging upside down with their throat slits thrashing around in pain and we need to stop that yeah, being vegan is a non-action. Yeah, what you're it's doing non -action. is choosing the plant-based milk instead of the cow's milk. You're choosing the vegetables instead of the steak. You know, that's all you're doing. You're not doing anything if you're not talking about it. You know, it's yeah, it's not. Can you imagine me coming up to somebody and going, oh, "Look, you want me to be active, like in the sense of like it's like me saying to someone like, um, am I doing you a favor by not punching you in the face? No." You're not doing me a favor by not punching me in the face. You're, you're doing me a favor if you were to stand up to someone and stop them from punching them, from getting them to punch, stopping someone from punching me in the face. That would be doing me a favor. But by you just not punching me in the face, that is that is not me. That is not you doing me a favor. No. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. No, <laughs> it's, 
is that if you walked, if you walked by, you know, with the whole Black Lives Matter thing at the moment, if you walked past somebody who has been, you know, having racial abuse shouted at them and you didn't do anything, that doesn't make you a non-racist because you're not doing it. That you're not stopping it. Racism. Pardon? That makes you compliant, complacent to the racism. Yeah. You say, yeah, it's okay, it's all right, I'm not saying anything. I mean, yeah. even if you don't like confrontation, you can still be like, are you okay to that person? And then make sure that they feel safe. That would yeah. still be a, a movement of, of, of like being active, but just to ignore it, you think you may as well just say you're racist as well because you just think it's okay. Yeah, and it's exactly the same with animals. If you know it's yeah. happening, you're vegan because you know it's happening and you know that this abuse and cruelty to animals is wrong. But if you're not yeah. spreading the message, if you're not talking to people, even the smallest thing like putting a sticker up or putting a piece of paper in a windscreen or going onto a farm or doing outreach, yeah. if you're not doing anything, you're not helping the movement. You're not helping create this vegan world. And I, I know that I'm sure in my heart of hearts that every vegan on this planet wants this to stop and wants a vegan world. Yeah. So let's make it happen and let's increase those numbers. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. To do nothing stops nothing, and you know, like like I said, animals are to animals. We are their biggest threat, but only hope, and we need to help them. Well, it's been a pleasure to talk to you, Ricky. And yeah, you too. Oh, I'm just so I'm <laughs> really happy that you've agreed to be interviewed because you've really inspired me, and I really hope that this will kick some other people up the butt to get them out there and yeah, see what so. they need. Yeah, I mean, I I welcome everybody, all love it, open loving arms because we just we need more of us, and you know what, like. Let's create an army, an army of love that's going to change the world because not only do the animals need it, but we need it. And especially environmentally, because I remember learning about environmental issues. And right now, as we stand, like the animal agriculture is the biggest form of, of uh, climate change that, that's on the planet, uh, like one of the biggest. Yeah. And right now, as we stand, if I was to have a baby, it, like if me and you had a baby today, It'd be our children's grandchildren that are going to die due to climate change. I don't want to see my family suffer. I don't want to see your family suffering. And when we can take down something that's simply because, let's face it, you don't give up anything by being vegan. The only thing you give up is violence in your diet. So let's create a vegan world where we get all the yumminess, the living harmony with one another, and let's just, yeah, let's hit the floor running and kick some ass. <laughs> So hopefully you enjoyed that and if you've been inspired by what Mippy said in this video to get active then please put a comment below so I know that we've we've reached out to you and that we've affected you. I'll also put a link below to Mippy's Facebook profile so you can find her there and find out what activism she does and contact her with any questions. And I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for supporting me and allowing me to continue doing this. If you want to support me, there's a link to my Patreon below in the description. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share this video and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks then. Bye.